Hey, everybody, and welcome to the small business show here at businessshow.co. Shannon, I am stoked to share this interview with everybody today. So am I. It's it's really a, a little different uh, type of business owner that, that we've had on before, and he, he's uh, got some great insight. He's been through a lot. This is a business that's been around for 90 plus years. Gosh, and, uh, you know, anything that's made it that long, uh, it's worth listening and hearing about. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. He's been he's been running it for 18 of those 90 years yeah. and 18 years in business is a long time and commendable. True. Right? All by itself. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, you and, and, and then you look at that and it's like, oh, well, that's kind of a drop in the bucket compared to how long the business has existed. So, yeah. And he's got a just a fascinating story about the business moving, you know, in and out of his family and back in control and everything else. So we're, we're really excited uh, to, to talk with Tom Blumenthal of Geary's today. And I think you're going to really enjoy this interview. I think so too. I, uh, I, I don't have anything else. I want to get right to it. If you're ready, I'm ready. I'm ready, man. Well, he is Shannon Jean. I'm Dave Hamilton. We are small businessing. And this is episode 319 of the small business show. <laughs> You know, it, it's not often that we have a guest on the show that's running a business that has been in operation for over 90 years. You know, it's crazy. Uh, yeah. A, a company that, you know, they, they may have started out small, but they've grown to five locations in Southern California and they've got over 80 employees. So they've, you know, it, it, it's fascinating. I love it. it. Tom Blumenthal, you know, he's had the challenging task of stewarding what's really a storied brand in Southern California and beyond through the coronavirus, adapting, you know, to make it through that. And also just the adapting to the changing customer habits, how people want to shop, this kind of thing. So Tom is a president and CEO of Geary's Beverly Hills, and we're really fortunate to have him with us today. Tom, thank you so much for joining us on the Small Business well, Thank show. you for having me, Shannon. Happy yeah. to be here. Yeah, that's great. I, I appreciate it. Um, before we get into some, some questions, give can you give us a... A bit of history related to Geary's and then describe to our business listeners really the business model and the business that you're in. Sure. So I always like to say that the Geary's kind of grew up with Beverly Hills and we were, we were founded in 1930, right in the heat of the depression, I might add, by um, H.L. Geary. And, and it, as you know, Beverly Hills in 1930 certainly wasn't what it is today. Um, it was just like any other small town USA. It had its drugstore and it had its uh, yeah, movie theater and you know diners and just gen a lot of general businesses in downtown Beverly Beverly Hills. And on Beverly Drive, which is where our flagship store has been for over ninety years, um, was started really as kind of a general store. It had um, a little cosmetics, a little jewelry, a little home homeware. Um, it was just kind of your everything type of store in 1930. Uh, Mr. Geary passed away uh, in the um, early 50s. His wife tried to run it for a while and ended up deciding that it wasn't for her. And so she sold the business to my grandparents in, in 1953. And um, they had a, a, a little broader vision for the store then. And um, took it to a level of concentrating really more on home entertaining um, and um, China crystal and silver. And, um, you know, uh, at that the point they bought the store, there were nine employees and, uh, you know, they didn't have air conditioning in 1953. And so oh, right. they, they, they spruced it up a bit and added air conditioning, focused the merchandising on, um, on China crystal and silver. And then um, my uncle um, got into the business in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. And, and then he, he brought it up uh, several notches, concentrating more on the high end part of the business and establishing uh, a direct mail business. Um, and, and, and then into the 80s and 90s. And then in 97, um, 
he decided that he wanted to concentrate more on our real estate rather than the retail business and sold the business to a company on the East Coast. Um, I was working here at the time. In fact, I've been working here since I was uh, 18 years old throughout college and, um, and did take a few years off to get some outside experience and then came back. But um, I thought at that point, my, my world was over. My, my you know, family right. business had been sold from under me. Um, the people that, um, that they sold it to ended up hiring me. They, they lived in, in Providence, Rhode Island, and um, weren't planning on spending a lot of time here. So I, they hired me to run the business. Fast forward five years later, um, they actually actually ended up selling to a venture capitalist group and they didn't want to have uh, Gary's as part of the portfolio. So they ended up selling it back to me um, Whoa. five years later. Wow. So what? everything comes awesome. full circle. Yeah. That's very yeah. fortuitous. Wow. I mean, uh, that you know, the way the way that worked and that you were able to stay on and then be ready for when that opportunity came around. Yeah, it was great. I mean. Uh, I couldn't have written the story better myself if I had to. That yeah. that's fascinating. So you you were able to sort of take over the family business without having the family over you. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Now that doesn't just happen. You know, at the time I was I was, I think I was thirty one years old. So um, thirty two. I mean, I didn't have the resources, obviously, to just write a check. Sure. For this little yeah. thing. And so, but I, so I did have to go to my family and, and they were a hundred percent supportive. Uh, my parents could not have been more supportive. So uh, we were able to put the whole deal together within the whole thing was closed. It's uh, just shy of 90 days from the, the day they uh, wow. told me they That's wanted incredible. to sell That's incredible. it. So. so, so you really did kind of have the family over you in a sense with them, you know, financing. Well, it. So, yes. so you I, weren't I, quite out from under that rug. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And no, I mean, listen, they, I, I was certainly running the show and, and they were not micromanaging right. me. We had, uh, you know, I have a board of directors, which is pretty much all family and a, a few close friends. So, uh, but it, at the end of the day, it's my show and I, and I, and I've been, I've been running it for the last what a great uh, almost 20 years. Yeah. What a great story. That's interesting. So, all right, so I'm, I'm curious. So you, you took this over, you know, like you said, 18, almost 20 years ago, the, yeah. The market of retail has changed. Forget about COVID or, or let. Them, oh my gosh. It's but, changed but, dramatically. Right, the, yeah. but that's the thing, right? Like, like Amazon wasn't a thing. In fact, no, having the wasn't. internet in one's home was barely a thing when you took this over. So how we do you survive? Have a website. We did not even have a website when I bought the company. <laughs> of course. Uh, I believe it. In 2003. Yeah. Um, we were just talking about doing it. And, and so uh, obviously we had, um, we've done a, a tremendous amount in those, uh, in, in almost 18 years. Um, we had one flagship store, um, uh, on Beverly drive in 2003. And now, um, in, we have five stores, three in Beverly Hills, uh, one in century city, one in Santa Monica and our, our website, which has grown dramatically in the last couple of years. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, it's wonderful. Well, one of the talking about that expansion, or, as I was, you know, researching about uh, Gary's, is it, it just seems like adaptation after adaptation, and and I I just co have to commend you for that because when I first started looking at your your stores, I was like, man, I have no idea how this works. I, I've been in the internet business my whole life, one way or another, technology and everything else, and I think I was just so impressed that. And so happy to see, you know, stores like yours still here. And I, I just know that there's just a constant embracing you know, takes, of change. I mean, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but it takes somebody that's got the passion for this type of a store to still be here. Because let's face it, it's, um, you know, uh, we are doing quite well, but yeah. I mean, it does take somebody that really wants to, to build it, run it. And I'm here every day. And I, I come in here like it's our first day of business every single day. And, and then, you know, we've been blessed to, to expand with, with Rolex uh, specifically and Patek Philippe by opening the watch boutiques, um, you know. Yeah, can you, can, that, that's, a, that's another part of the, the story that's really intriguing to me is this uh, 
you know, coming together with these other brands to expand your own. Can, can you speak to that a little bit of how something like Absolutely. that form, you know, how, how you formatted that relationship and then, you know, built an entire new store to, to grow that? So when, when I bought the company, we had um, Rolex was part of uh, the merchandise mix with the people that um, had bought the store from Rhode Island. Uh, they, in fact, we got Rolex for them. Mm-hmm. And so we had a, I already had a good relationship with Rolex. And, um, you know, when you're um, an authorized dealer, you don't just sell the company. It has to be approved by them for the right. um, uh, distribution to stay. So obviously they, they did approve me. And um, within a year of me opening or buying the company back, they decided they wanted to have a presence on Rodeo Drive, which is right around the corner from our flagship store. And um, if I was, you know, like I said, brand new at running this company, only had owned the store for maybe a year at this point. Uh, I was, it was part defensive, but also partly really exciting to be able to do this on Rodeo Drive. But I can tell you 100% of the people that I went to to talk about doing this said I was crazy to open a store around the corner with Rolex. Yeah, uh, because you already have it in the main store. Why do you need it on Rodeo Drive? Well, I'm so glad I didn't listen to anybody. One of those, <laughs> one of those decisions where you just, you know, if you don't take a risk, you're never going to go anywhere. And and I did take the risk of doing this. You know, uh, even with all the ad- uh, uh, advice I had gotten not to do it, but something just told me it was the right move, so we did it. And since you know, that's where. Uh, the expansion really started. And then we opened up uh, three stores later. Um, uh, in fact, we've moved to a bigger location on Rodeo Drive uh, from that original one. So I'm, you know, to, I do like, I'm, I, I do like to say that I did make the right decision. Sure. Sure. It sounds and, like it. Uh, uh, it served, it's, it's, it served us really well. And, and is that, you know, was the concept, okay, there, there's a dip, we want to serve a different, demographic or a it's more a totally focused different, totally different customer on rodeo drive from beverly drive even though they're re- literally right around the corner from each other they're worlds apart and how how are they different what i, I have no i'm i don't know anything about this how does that work so rodeo drive is is you know kind of the luxury capital of the world it's uh very heavily tourist driven um even though we haven't seen a lot of tourists these days because right. of the, the pandemic but uh, it's a it, it just even even people that live in Southern California, there's very little overlap between Beverly Drive and Rodeo Drive. It's just very different. Interesting. Oh, that's great. So, um, and then we, uh, as I said, uh, I think it was seven or eight years later, we opened up branded boutiques on Rodeo Drive, one for Rolex and one for Patek Philippe. In fact, it was the first mm. Patek Philippe boutique in the United States. That's that's awesome. Wow. And yeah, so, expanding with that same model is terrific. Right. Right. That's great. So and after well, that, we've opened up two more Rolex boutiques. And great. and how has how has um the COVID affected those? Because I'm I'm guessing you don't have any option to sell that stuff online. No, so exactly. So yeah, no, we we show the product online, but it, the transactions have to happen within our store, which is really a great great model to work by when, when you're selling luxury goods sure. like that, because, you know, uh, they want to protect their local ju- jewelers, their local dealers, um, and not have somebody from, you know, the UK or oh, Saudi absolutely. Arabia ordering product or even within the United States, they, they, they really are trying to support their jeweler in every location. So, uh, they don't allow us to sell online. And we do have to have a relationship with every customer that we're dealing with face to face. Makes sense. Fascinating. Yeah. So you, you mentioned, you know, COVID and the pandemic. When uh, I want to dig into this a little bit, um, it, when did you first, you and your team, realize that, okay, this is, a, you know, going to be serious? This is going to impact us dramatically. Uh, you know, it's just about a year ago today. I, um, we have every year we have a, huge event in our main store it's our annual sale and people line up you know they get here like three hours before the store opens on the first day and there's usually lines i mean we we have 
we do well over a thousand transactions on the first day of the sale every year. And, and it's always in March. It's always like the second or third week of March oh, every year. Wow. And of course, this is a massive event that takes a tremendous amount of planning and execution. It just doesn't happen overnight. In fact, we start planning it usually six months in advance. But obviously, this time, you know, last year, there was a lot of nervousness about the, uh, about the pandemic and what was going to happen. And the week that we were going to do the sale last year was when um, uh, the country shut down for what was going to be for two weeks. Right. <laughs> so we decided, well, we'll postpone the sale because we couldn't possibly not have it. Mm. Well, um, you know, that two weeks then led to four weeks, four more weeks. And it was inevitable that, first of all, we had no idea when we were going to reopen. And then when we did reopen, we, we weren't going to be able to do the sale. It, you were just completely done. shut down. All of your stores? All of the stores were shut down. We were still operating our web business okay. uh, out of our main store. So there were a few of us that came in. Um, every day, but that was really just to fulfill web orders and, uh, you know, customer service uh, uh, situations, but we had no transactions in any of our stores other than online. Wow. And again, this, uh, it, it was extremely uh, nerve wracking from a proprietor's standpoint where, you know, I ca- I told all my employees, I'm, you're all on, you're all going to stay on payroll. I'm not laying you off. Again, originally it was two weeks and then it was an additional four weeks. And I kept sending emails out to them saying, don't worry, you're still employed. We ended up not laying, you know, we, we ended up not furloughing or, or uh, changing our, our key staff at all. We had a few people that we did lay off, but only a very few. And um, That's terrific. the That's other great. 75 stayed on and were fully paid throughout the whole uh, pandemic. And Good did, for you. Did you? That's, that's great. You were able to do that. Yeah. yeah. Did you partake in any of the, you know, the 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 programs? Uh, the yeah, PPP, I did. I did apply know? for a PPP loan and 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 got it. Right. Uh, yeah. Again, um, we certainly qualified because we were keeping our all of our staff on. I mean, I had a spreadsheet that went like you know with probably twenty five columns to see how much longer the cash flow would uh, yeah. allow me to keep people um, on payroll as well as pay our rents. We paid all of our rents. Yeah, that's impressive. Um, uh, so the PPP was very helpful. It did do exactly what it was supposed to do. Yeah. Keeping your, your people on payroll, paying your landlords and paying your utilities, which is exactly what. That's what, yeah, it was, it was, you know, pre-unemployment, right? Either. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. Right. And so which it, which and, is smart. And yep. Exactly. And so then, you know, finally we, they allowed us to do curbside pickup, which I thought to myself, well, that's really not going to work for us. We can't sell a Rolex watch curbside. And, <laughs> yeah, but, we, yeah. but we were able to sell, uh, have uh, people come in to, um, you know, pick up orders and, and things like that. And that lasted a very short period of time before they did allow us to reopen on uh, May 30th, which, or May, 20, May 27th, I think was the first day uh, the stores were open for business yeah. uh, after being closed from uh, March 13th. Wow. So and that was a limited, uh, limited capacity, limited capacity yeah. but uh, at least in the house with customers. Obviously, we had gone through um, to prepare for that great extent to we rearranged furniture. We bought, you know, plastic shields. We invest, you know, obviously everybody wearing a mask and temperatures taken and and we're still doing all of that today, uh, uh, several, you know, almost uh, six months later. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it, it, it's fascinating. So the curbside pickup, I, I read somewhere that you were doing some uh, interactive shopping experiences for some customers. Yes. Like, now, like, we, and we're still, all of these, you know, it's interesting, all of these uh, pandemic uh, protocols that we put in place, I think we're going to keep them and maybe not yeah. the shields and the masks sure. eventually when we don't have to do that, but, um, or taking people's temperatures when they come in the building, but, um, you know, it's, it's a little personal. Pickup. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> curbside pickup has really served us well, especially during the holidays. And then we also were doing virtual appointments with clients over FaceTime. 
So all of our sales associates, we provide all of our sales associates with uh, iPhones and they can work with a client over the over FaceTime. Uh, and that happens regularly and it still does. And it's something the client would request. Uh, I, you need to, I need some additional help or something like that. And then the salesperson sets up an appointment and they go through those exactly. things. Is that, or okay. I don't feel comfortable coming in. Can, can we shop over the phone and, I and Great. over FaceTime so I can actually, you know, see the, see the merchandise as best I can. And, and does that course, work for your for your partnerships with Rolex and Paddock as well? Like not it, really. Those, okay. those those transactions really need to happen in, in person. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's 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 fascinating. I, I love the concept of you're going through this uh, pandemic and the recovery and everything, but then you're you know immediately like, well, I think we're going to keep this because if your customers are responding to it in a positive manner, you know that that doesn't, why wouldn't you? Yeah. 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 Right. Right. I mean. Listen, uh, good things can come from every everything, and this is certainly one of those. There, yep. we've we've learned a lot. I can tell you that. I'm sure. Uh, yeah, and, and I think that, like, coming back to my my earlier comment about embracing change and adapting and all that kind of stuff, is there a, a a struggle between you know you have this very long traditional business that's uh, you know got such a great reputation, but then you're you're trying to change all the time to adapt to new, you know, what your customers want and everything. Do you have to balance? Do you have customers that rebel against some things, but other, you know, how does that, how does that work? You know, when we've, when we've changed certain policies, there's been once every once in a while, you get a little pushback, but at, at the end of the day, I think people, they're just grateful that a store that's been around for 90 years is still here and doing the, the core business that we've always done. And, um, you know, there's not a day goes by that I don't get uh, a phone call or, or I see somebody that they're just so grateful that the store's still around. Because let's face it, there's a lot of of great companies, um, even before the pandemic, that that right that just haven't survived. And and the fact that uh, you know we're still you know independent, we're not owned by a conglomerate. Um, there's still a face to the store. Uh, you know, and I get involved. If you know all day long. And I'm here, you know, unless I'm traveling for business, my office is in the store Yeah, and I'm yeah. happy to be here. That's great. H- have you continued that tradition? Do you have family members that, that, yeah, you know, stores? I don't, I, I don't have, I don't have um, any, I'm, I'm not married and I don't have any children. I so uh, we, I don't know what the next generation is going to be, but we're, we'll, uh, yeah. I, it'll be, it'll be fine. That's great. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, so, one of the things that, you know, here you're involved in trying to keep your stores, you know, up and running, keep everybody employed. But I know you're you're also involved in this uh, Beverly Hills Business Recovery Task Force. Can you explain what that is or was? Is still going on? How is- well, we haven't met recently, but obviously before um, we reopened, about a month before, um, the mayor... Uh, asked me to join this task force along with other retailers, a couple other retailers, some restaurateurs and hoteliers about how we can revitalize and, and reopen Beverly Hills the right way and get people to come back to shop here. And, and really from the moment we reopened, um, you know, the, the demand was really strong. Now I have to add that, don't forget, we were open for two days and then then there was the, the civil unrest that happened um, all over the country because of the George Floyd. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So then we had to board up our stores and be closed for another ten days. Oh my goodness. So that... I, I always I just refer to twenty twenty as the year. Of, my middle name is adjust. I mean, I just adjust <laughs> to whatever hoop I have to jump through that day, and um, it's a little less uh, daunting this year. But every day last year it seemed to be a different hoop. So yeah, we were closed for ten days um, yeah. after that. Luckily, uh, none of our stores had too much damage. But um, you know, then when we reopened again um, in early June, it was pretty much uh, everybody was just so happy that the stores were reopening and that they could come out and be in the store. And it was, uh, I mean, our business was very strong from that moment on. That's great. Yeah, I mean, it's just like I'm sure people just love to be able to go back, you know, to to uh, 
you know, go in the store again, something they've seen there forever, basically. So, and one of the things that I, that we did do is, you know, the holidays are a, a really special time for us at Geary's. I mean, we, you know, we've always been a huge holiday centered business, whether sure. it's Thanksgiving, Halloween, Christmas, Hanukkah, all of them. And we decorate, um, we always do a, a big, you know, big job of decorating. And I, and I said to my team, I said, look, I want to, you know, go all out this year. I mean, spare no expense. You know, I, I, I call it, we're not decorating to the nines, we're decorating to the tens. Mm. And um, we really, uh, we wanted the store to just look as festive as it could be and really put people in the spirit of the season and, and get them excited about being in a store that's fully uh, decked for the holidays. And if that really served us well too. Yeah. Cause you know, Everything I'm hearing as we've been talking for the last 20, you know, 25 minutes, I mean, Geary's is really uh, a part of that local community, right? Uh, especially your, maybe your flagship store and, and people that sense of stability of being able to go in there and see decorations and the holiday, like it's, it's part of the you know, normalcy that, that we've been lacking for so long. Exactly. And I wanted to, I wanted to portray that we aren't, cutting back at all we are doing just the opposite we're stepping it up to to really get everybody excited about the season and put them in in a, in a better frame of mind because you know if you recall during november and december uh people were they were telling us to not go to family and don't travel and don't yeah. get together for the holidays and i mean all the stuff nobody wanted to hear but we really wanted us, you know, at least do as much as we could to uh, make the store look festive and and beautiful for the holidays. That's great. So I have a couple of questions left. And one of the things, you know, we had a guest on the show uh, a few years ago who kind of ran, he ran a similar multi-generational business and he made a comment and I wanted to see whether you agree. Uh, it, it was uh, Rick Stewart with a company uh, named Listo that had been around for basically forever as well. And as a, as a kid growing up in the business, you know, he felt it was very challenging to take over and to ultimately become the president, you know, while working among people that had seen him grow up as a kid. And he said, I think that's more challenging than starting a business on your own. Did you have any experience like that? Oh, plenty. Let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple of people that, have, that, um, are, that still work here that worked for my grandfather. Is that right? And my uncle. And wow. <laughs> so, um, and as, as time has gone, we've, we've lost a few of them, but uh, to retirement, but uh, my uh, director of operations has been with us over 40 years. So she has seen, you know, as I said, she worked for all, all three of us and that, you know, I wouldn't say it's harder to start a business, but I think, if you're going to be the one to take over, you've got to have it in your blood, not just because it's your it's your birthright or because you're the the eldest and you're the one that has to do it. You have to want to do it. Yeah. And for me, it was always something I knew, you know, as a kid growing up that I wanted to be a part of the store and a part of this company. And so it 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 was maybe it was, it was different because I bought the store five years after it had been sold, but I didn't have a problem um, with uh, people that had worked for my uh, my uncle or my my grandparents, um, res you know, respecting the fact that yeah. I was in charge. You know. Yeah, well, and I think you you know proved yourself. I mean, it's one thing you, we can sit here and have a casual conversation about the last, you know, 20 or so years of your life running that, but it's full of difficulties, I'm sure, and uh, very tough decisions. And and one of the things that I just keep hearing is that you've just taken action. You know, you took the action to buy the store. You may not have had the money. You thought, you know, you were young and try to get things going. And then it, the expansion and the partnership and all those things, you know, it takes really a, a bias to action. And yeah. we, we love that here on, on, on the show is, is there one, and we always like to ask our guests advice for other you know, small business owners that are aspiring to be as successful and as large as, uh, as your business. Is there one action item that you could 
kind of leave our get our listeners with that you would recommend they em- embrace uh, to be successful? Well, you have to go with, I mean, as much as, you know, when I opened that first store after buying the company a year later and, and with everybody, all the people who I, who are still on my board and I still um, deeply appreciate their, their opinions, they were all telling me not to do this. And I, I knew I had to do it. I just, my gut told me, you know, we did a, business plan and and we we did all the numbers and the break even looked like it was going to be doable but um i always my attorney who's a, a, a great personal friend you know when you're signing a lease and and um at, at, at a certain level it was going to go into percentage rent and he made a comment to me well if you do that kind of business you'll be happy to uh pay percentage rent and um i was thinking wow he doesn't have a lot of faith in what i'm doing here but let me just tell you, we exceeded that number threefold um, after about three years of being open. So uh, I just, it gave me a lot of confidence that I did the right thing. And, and it's not that I don't listen to their advice today. I listen to their advice all the time and nine times out of 10, I take it. But this one, that first leap, I had, I, I really... I, I had to, you know, search deep and I did it. And this um, was the Rolex, uh, the Rolex expansion. Is that right? Right. right. The expansion yeah. on the road to the drive, yeah, which was that's, a, that's very wonderful. expensive. I mean, you're, I was signing a lease that was, you know, oh, yeah. extremely expensive building a, you know, it was sure. a small store. The first one was small, but still was going to be a lot of money to build. And, um, yeah. you know, just had to happen. That's, that's great. Well, Tom, I mean, there's just some real gems here and the, the adaptation and, and, you know, embracing tradition and uh, getting through COVID and everything. And, and I really appreciate you coming on the show and, you know, sharing your story today. What's the best way for our listeners to, to connect with you and to, to learn more about, about Geary's? Uh-huh. Well, uh, our website, Geary's.com. Um, and there is, you can, if they have any questions, there's a email, um, uh, link on the website that goes to our customer service department being forwarded to me. That's great. Well, you know, again, congratulations, making it through, keeping that, you know, that stable part of the community going and and that business that I have no idea how you do it, but I'm totally impressed that you're still here. (laughs) (laughs) And I've, I've really enjoyed talking with with you today, you know, come back from time to time and uh, let us know how, how things are going. Well, thanks for having me, Shannon. Dave, appreciate it. Man, what a what a kind guy. I mean, he's yeah. really thoughtful. It, it, you know, he is here, here he is running this big company, but and I think it I mean it, it it's who he is, but coming from it being a family business and now again being a, I mean, I guess it's always been a family business. It just right. wasn't always his family, but um it, I, you know, he sees it that way. He it, it's clear he treats all the people that work there and even his customers as part of this extended family that he is the steward of, if you will. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. That, that word I would agree steward, uh, because the more I learned about Geary's and and Tom and everything that that's the word, you know, because it is this kind of storied brand down in Southern California Mm. and they've, they've kind of protected it, but at the same time, they're just, you know, just like every small business, they're just making changes all the time, maybe behind the scenes or how they do things and they're adapting. And, and it impresses me, especially since if you go to their website, the, the, the things they sell are incredible. You know, things that I look and go, wow, how does that business work? <laughs> yeah, know? right. So I love getting a little piece of it today on the show. And um, I, I, there's a, a lot of great lessons there for all of us. I I, I agree. Yeah, no, it, it fantastic. And really, you know, somebody... We talk to a lot of small business owners and and to talk to someone that's, you know, on that next notch up from yeah. small business and hear how thoughtful he he still is about his business. I mean, he he's not running a small business, but he very right. much treats it like a small business in terms yeah. of 
just, you know, his thought process, or at least the way I would like to see a small business treated. And of course, there's some small businesses that aren't treated nearly that well. So, you know, it's yeah, great. how it goes. But yeah, fantastic. Yeah, really. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Great stuff. So, we, you know, we hope you enjoyed uh, the interview with Tom. Uh, we'll put the, the links to Geary's and everything in the show notes. I encourage you to learn about the business. It's fascinating. Um, and, he said uh, something, we, come in like it's our first day in business every day. I come, he says he comes yeah. in like it's our first day in business every day. That's a lesson every single one of us should take home. That's difficult after 20 plus years. Yeah. Yeah. As a president, even longer, just working there. So yeah. being excited to come in. And and I, I think that I got the sense I could hear in his voice, like, you know, when the pandemic hit and everything else, it was just one more challenge for him to figure out. That's right. His his team and everything. So he just looked at looks at things the right way. We talk about story and how you frame things and you know he's got the right framework on it uh to succeed clearly totally totally, totally. yeah no it's great stuff yeah i'm very glad to talk it. to him yeah for sure all right folks well you know what to do send us your questions thoughts anything you want you want some business therapy whatever it is feedback at businessshow.co and uh go to businessshow.co slash reviews leave us a review please we it really makes a big difference we love it so thanks for hanging out and uh Keep leaving that. Keep leaving. Keep living that charmed life. Don't leave the charmed life. Live that charmed life. See you next week.